Initial look at a Sylvania VC2225 SL01. It's a rebranded Panasonic PV1220. And this is the VCR that I grew up with. Not the model number, this is the exact VCR that my parents had in the household from 1983 when they bought this new till sometime in the early 2000s when we stopped using VHS. This VCR has been out of commission for over a decade. It's been stored out in a shed and I was able to save this from being thrown out from my dad a few years ago. My plan is to resurrect this thing, restore it, and get it working like it did years ago. So just to go over some of the basics of this, like I said, it's a rebranded Panasonic PV1220. And uh, I have the remote from a Panasonic PV1220 here, because we also happen to have one of those as our second VCR that we got probably five, six years after this one. Uh, my dad used to fix up things, so we got it broken. He fixed it up as a second VCR. And this remote has stayed. The original remote for the Sylvania got damaged years ago, but it was absolutely identical. Just had a different brand name here. This plugs into the back with a little three and a half jack. And it'll give you scan, fast forward and rewind, scan only, pause, and then frame advance. If you're not in play mode, this remote won't do anything at all. And if you get to the VCR controls, and I really love the look of this VCR. It's a very minimalistic, kind of futuristic look for its time. You have power control. VCR will switch it, switch the RF modulator on and off, like a TV slash VCR button. If you press timer, uh, if you have a timer set, it'll put it into timer mode. So this will only record for its single event timer if it's in timer mode. Going along, you have eject. Let's get another shot of that. Rewind with scan, stop, fast forward with scan, play, pause, record, and frame advance. And similar to the Panasonic that this is made by, you have the blue, green, and sort of amber red colors for the stop, play, record. I believe Panasonic used these throughout most of the 80s, these colors. The VFD display is very similar to the Panasonic. The only difference is I believe the PV1220 used an amber color for play and stop. This one, I'll show in a bit, is green throughout, but it's still nice and bright. And won't let me reset because there isn't a tape in there. The controls down on the bottom here, you've got your speed selector switch. This is three speeds, it's from 1983. Tracking control, which is just a manual potentiometer. And then moving on, you've got uh, your programming. Very, very easy to set this. If you want to program the clock, select, and select the day, the time, hour, minute, select again, you're done. Then you can do on off. So I can set the on time as, oops, set the on time, select on on Friday at 510, and then off at 610. If you, that little bar here tells you that it's the first week. So this is the Friday of the first week. If I keep going, see, it'll get into two. So now it's saying it's a week, it's over a week from now. So you're getting into the second week. And it can go as far as 14 days, or it'll let you record every day. And then back to the beginning.
So very simple operation for the timer, but it's also not very capable. Let me get into the rest of the front here. These scratches are fairly recent. The way this was stored and then brought back to my house, unfortunately this got damaged pretty recently. Don't think there's much I can do about this because this is a sort of metallic paint on the front. But it's an electronic selector for the tuner. Doesn't have it only has channels 2 to 13 for VHF. Doesn't have any extra presets that you can use. And down here is where you select them. So it has a little switch for each channel so you can select. Let's see if I can get this focused here. VHF low, VHF high or UHF. And then you have your little tuning dial here and an indicator. So if I'm on VHF low, now I'm tuning through the VHF low dial. So you manually tune each one of these in. And once you have it tuned in, normally when you'll tune it in, you turn the automatic fine tuning off so you can get this exact. Turn it back on when you're done and the channel's programmed. Now, what I hated about this as a child, this would not tune in any of the cable channels. Some of the newer tuners like this would either have a wider band for VHF low and VHF high so that it would overlap the cable band. This one didn't. If I remember right, it would overlap a little bit on some of the channels in the teens, but it wouldn't get my cartoon channel. One last feature is the one touch record. So when you select this, you can dial in how long you want it to start recording from now. So if a program's just starting and you're right there, you can set it to record for an hour and it'll automatically shut off afterwards. The back of this is also very simple. There's your model number, your RCA line in, line out, the jack. So this is for the remote that came with it. And this is if you're interfacing this with a camera. So you can, I guess, sync them up. Remotely play and pause with your camera if it's plugged in here. Your VHF in and out. So if you're hooking this up to the TV to watch it on channel 3 or 4, you would plug it into here and then pass your antenna through. And for the UHF tuner on here, you'd hook your UHF antenna on the bottom, and then you can pass it through to the UHF tuner on your TV. Most modern VCRs and TVs just ran everything through the coax together. And then your selector for channel three and four. And that's it. It's very simple. I can show you some of the operation, but the belt for the capstan is shot, so I'm not going to hit play. It, it will barely move. The, the take up will barely move. The capstan will barely move the tape through here, so I've ordered a whole new belt kit to restore this. But I can show you rewind, which doesn't work. I can show you fast forward, which does work. And you can hear the loud hammering of the brake when I hit stop. This VCR has always made these sounds. Always. Even when it was a few years old, this is just how it operates. Oh, yeah, rewind's starting to come back now. I've taken the lid off. You can do that. There's just two screws that hold this uh, plastic cover on. And you can really see just what sort of cleanup is needed here. It's pretty disgusting inside. Years of dust and grime on everything. And here if I open it up and you can see that belt. I uh, don't even know what's growing on there, but that's everything's going to be cleaned and scrubbed. This brake pad here has come loose, so I'm going to need to glue that back collection of dust in there. Now in a little further, you can see lots of dust. 
There's a bit of rust starting on there. Now, this wasn't stored in the best environment for a couple of years. I'm hoping that now that it's being kept inside in ideal conditions that that will stop. And of course, this is just a basic two-head unit. Again, nothing fancy. But absolutely rock solid. These Panasonic-built VCRs of the early to mid-80s were just workhorses. And they were sold under so many different brands. I've seen this one, the Sylvania, uh, the Panasonic version, obviously. Quasar, there was a Quasar that was sold. I've seen Magnavox versions online that look very similar to this, just with a different brand on the front. Here's what the bottom looks like with the bottom panel removed. There's so much circuitry jammed within this simple two-head VCR. As I dig further in, here's the shield removed from up top. And you can just see how dirty this is. There's your tracking and audio head. And right in there, that's the dew sensor. And I actually have experience with this when we used to take it out to the lake out in the winter. And you have a cold VCR you bring inside. And when we powered on, it would literally say do on the front and not let you do anything. And it would detect the moisture, the condensation on here. And if there's condensation on here, there's condensation on your head and all your other transport, which means you really don't want to play a tape. And then your record head here. And all your transport. Here's your uh, tape sensor for the position, the end of the uh, end of the tape position. You have your IR LEDs facing either direction. And if you look on the side here, there is a sensor. It's kind of hard to see from here. You can see it right there. And then on the other side, there's the other one. Older versions of this actually had an incandescent bulb that would light up and it would shine light through. Modern ones used uh, infrared LEDs. Nasty. Here's what it looks like on the inside with the front panel removed. Pretty straightforward. You can see all the functions that are available on here. Dub is one that I've never seen. That must have been on a, a higher-end model. You see the little clock there? That's if it's in timer mode. See that little washer? It looks like it's bent into two and it's spacing this. I remember when I was young that at one point this VCR failed and we would get tracking bars along say the top fifth of the picture no matter what couldn't clean the heads couldn't adjust the tracking recording playing would always have that you record something on this play it on another VCR you'd have those bars we put up with it for a year and then I know that this was repaired somehow that we fixed it and I'm wondering if it would be something as silly as just putting that little washer in there. Because that looks like it's on purpose. After a lot of pondering and looking, it finally dawned on me. There's a little pivot here. You can see that. And there's another one in behind here. Right down there. And the whole main circuit board here including the whole front panel pivots so that you can service everything. All the electronics, the fuses, the power supply, 
everything. And you can get at the belts. So let's see how the belts are. I feel surprisingly good. Oh, that's a little... Oh, that's pretty spongy right there. And sticky. That one's really good, too. Really? And then that sort of stuff on the belts. They seem to be in relatively good shape. I'm wondering if it's just the idlers. I remember that even when this thing worked, the idler, especially rewind scan, or even rewind, very slow, like it didn't work very well. I know the belts have been replaced on this a few times. I don't think the idlers have ever been replaced. I'm going to put it back together. And hopefully in about a week, I'll have the belt kit. And regardless of the condition of these belts, I'm going to replace everything. I'm going to replace both idlers and the other belt on top. Clean the whole thing. And we'll see what it does.